We're back, and for those of you who are just joining us for this second part of our video, we're going to introduce ourselves again. My name is Kendra Hawk, and I'm the Associate Registrar of Enrollment Management, and I'll let my guests introduce themselves. Maybe you can start, Jenny. Okay, uh, my name is Jenny. I am a first-year medical student, and I am the Vice President of the Mississauga Academy of Medicine. Uh, I work as a liaison between the Mississauga Academies, as well as the St. George Academies, and uh, with Medical Society. When you say Vice President, you mean the Vice President of the Student Council? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I thought you might be the Vice President of the University, which <laughs> I wouldn't put you know, past a med student. They're very accomplished. Yes. And Dr. McClellan, if you could. I'm Sarah McClellan. I'm the Academy Director for the Mississauga <laughs> Academy of Medicine and an emergency physician at Trillium Health Partners, which is close by. And uh, I work, work both clinically and as the Academy Director. And my job is to make sure that all the curriculum uh, that U of T offers is provided here at MAM by excellent faculty and that the access to all components of the curriculum are experienced here at MAM. And that, I think that's uh, an important point that you make, that when we talk about the academies, and if you're, you don't know what we mean by academy, we did talk about it in the video we just shot, but every academy offers the same curriculum, um, the same learning opportunities, uh, the same hospital exposure and experience to clinical rotations. And so when we talk about, actually I liked this analogy, when we talk about um, Picking an academy, it's like picking how you like your strawberries the best. Do you want them in a fruit salad, or do you like shortcake, or you know what? Which way are you going to eat your strawberries? Because it's all fantastic. So it's a one of those great decisions to have to make when you come when it comes down to it. So um, when we do talk about academies, every every academy claims to have a real feel or flavor, especially their students uh, talk about it. So I was wondering what you would say. Um, is the feeling of man. How would you describe it? Um, I guess I can go. I, I think I would say the feeling of MAM is how we like to put it as a mammally. Mm -hmm. uh, so the student body at MAM gets along really well with each other and because we're a pretty small group, um, it feels really tight knit and the staff and faculty at the Mississauga Academy as well are just, they're fantastic and they're very supportive and um, I don't know if you guys just met Jonathan um, and Mark, and uh, they'll help you with everything that you need. Mm -hmm. I noticed that. The tech guys. Yeah, so we're helpful. very lucky. I think the feel here is a very community-friendly environment, and our support staff and admin staff are fantastic and really look out for all the student experiences and for the students themselves. And it's, it's really a great place to work. So I think that when I started working in, in the MD program, people started talking about the mammalie right away. Um, and it's definitely something that I think makes this um, academy unique. I mean, all the academies have a very collegial feel, but the mammalie is, is trademarked by MAM. Um, what are the other things that you think make MAM unique? Like, maybe you can uh, answer. I think uh, MAM is special in terms of our relationship with the hospitals. We have an excellent uh, working relationship with Trillium Health Partners in, who advocate certainly for education and for our MAM students. They, and the fact that our hospital has a wide variety of opportunities and access to a large population, patient population, we're one of the largest community hospitals probably in Canada. Uh, we see a wide variety of different pathologies, which as a medical student you'll appreciate to see. Um, we have cardiac surgery, neurosurgery, we have you know, a good variety of internal medicine and excellent, excellent uh, staff and faculty. So I think um, one of the things that's really unique to MAM is just our exposure to a wide variety of patient problems and uh, populations and a large refugee and immigrant population here in Mississauga, which uh, presents really unique opportunities for our students as well. Great. Um, and to add to that, I think uh, Dr. McLennan has gotten everything, um, but something that is unique to MAM is that uh, we get to work closely with these physicians. So uh, there's some opportunities where um, you get to work alongside the physicians rather than you know behind behind them. So I think that's quite unique for MAM. So thinking back to a year ago, or you know even when you were you finished your interview for the MD program and you were trying to decide which campus to pick, why would you? suggest someone should pick MAM or what, should, what, would, what would a student look like who would want to pick MAM? 
Okay. Um, <laughs> So I had no preference. Uh, I indicated no preference on uh, when I had to pick between Ma'am or St. George. Uh, and that's mostly because um, I was told that if you're a good student and if you have a goal in mind, you'll do well no matter where you are. And I really did believe in that. But alongside that, I also heard a lot of great things uh, about Ma'am from 2T1, so the, the year above me. And they told me about the opportunities that I would have at Ma'am and uh, like working alongside physicians that close uh, proximity, as well as just the opportunities. I'm sitting here as the VP of MAM for MedSoc, and um, I would have never imagined that to be true. So there's a lot of leadership opportunities here out at MAM that um, are quite scarce, I would say, in uh, St. George. So there's a lot of things like that. Great. Do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, and I think the nice thing about MAM and really anywhere you choose is that you can take advantage of many opportunities and everywhere is slightly different and have different opportunities and it's really what you make of them that will inform your experience. So there's lots of different opportunities here at MAM in terms of leadership, um, quality experiences, um, you know, the student interest groups are are, are burgeoning here like mm -hmm. there's lots of opportunities for both music there are music groups there are you know there's lots of sports teams there are what else other i mean there are i think variety of opportunities whatever, whatever you really want to do yeah. you can do here yeah. in mississauga yeah. Yeah. as a U of T student you can join any club something that surprises students i was talking to some of our new students just on wednesday and they were shocked to learn that they're still undergrad students. And they are still undergrad students when you're an MD student, which means you have access to all the amazing things across all the campuses at U of T. So beyond the great things that MAN has to offer, they can access all of those yeah, as well. Yeah, you can use all the UTM. We're on the University of Toronto Mississauga campus, and so it's a big campus as well. And so there are lots of, I mean, certainly the sports complex here is quite awesome. And I know when I teach, often the students are coming from swimming or from the gym, mm -hmm. and it's really close by. And I think another unique thing about MAM is that all the classes in first and second year are housed here, except for a couple mandatory ones. Um, at the St. George campus downtown, but the majority are here. They don't have to travel to a variety of different hospitals for the experiences, and so they take advantage of going to the gym at lunchtime. And oh, that I think nice. that is pretty neat. Yeah, and it makes it sort of easier to figure out where to live. You know that exactly. things are going to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Something that's really nice is that from our classes to the gym, if you really like going to the gym, you don't even have to walk outside. Oh, really? So all the buildings are connected. <laughs> and the really cool thing about uh, the gym at Mississauga is, uh, Academy is that uh, there, it's not very busy. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people who don't like to, you know, fight for machines or anything like that, it's really nice. You, just, you really can zip over between classes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, this is a common question. We, we put together some list of common questions, but if anyone is watching live, you're welcome to type a question in about um, what it's like to be a student, an MD student in general, and also any questions you have about MAM in particular. Um, so I thought we could start with clinical experiences. So what types of clinical experiences will a student get at MAM? Uh, well, starting in first year, students are exposed to clinical skills, which take place at Trillium Health Partners, which has two hospital sites, one at Credit Valley and one at Mississauga Hospital. And so students go to both sites for their clinical skills and go on to patient wards soon into their first year. As well, a part of the curriculum at U of T is to do these, we call them triple E's. I don't even know what triple E stands for. <laughs> but it's these external maybe experiences where you would shadow different physicians. And there are lots of opportunities to shadow out here in Mississauga. And so often I'll have a med student following me in the emergency department and observing what we do. And most of the physicians in Mississauga will have students the odd time from first and second year shadowing them just to see what, you know, you probably won't know what you want to do right when you start medical school. So it's a good opportunity to, to shadow and, and see different specialties and see what people's lives are like in medicine. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, you don't have to answer everything. Okay. <laughs> Some of these uh, are going to be easy to answer for one person. So, um, did you, I'm sorry, did you talk about shadowing? I got distracted by our three-part question in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. So, um, 
they, you can shadow physicians at all academies. I mean, most people just choose to shadow, I think, in Mississauga because mm -hmm. of where they live. Some students do live downtown in Toronto, so sometimes they'll shadow as well downtown. The, the, all the academies can shadow each other's physicians. Yeah. Uh, it's just more where you live and where you're willing to travel. So. Um, and then clerkship. Once you get to clerkship, uh, if, if the people watching don't know, so you start two years of pre-clerkship, which is mostly classroom learning with some application. And then once you hit clerkship, you're spending all of your time in the hospitals. So um, what does it look like with clerkship at, at MAM? Are you seeing a typical so, number of uh, specialties as all the academies? Um, how do you choose your electives? It's a lot of questions. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I the clerkship that. rotations are standard across all of U of T, and there are six rotations, and every U of T student does um, each specialty, so surgery, ob peds, internal medicine. Sorry, I have to sneeze. Oh, no. Sorry, you can sneeze. I'm already had the cold. And then there are six different rotations, and how you go through each one uh, depends. And we host 100% of our rotations here in Mississauga, all academies do send one person to sick kids for a pediatric rotation. So each academy gets one person to go downtown for that one. Um, but generally, each academy hosts all their own students at their academy for clerkship. And so it's the same out here. So when you say one person goes to sick kids, you mean only one student or? or one student per rotation. Oh, per rotation. Okay. Goes to so every student goes sick to kids. sick kids once or? No, one, okay. uh, one student from each academy for each rotation. Okay, goes to the hospital for sick children. And is it someone who expresses interest in it? It's usually someone who wants to uh, go to the hospital for sick yeah. kids. It's a, it's a choice thing. You don't, okay. We don't force. Well, it's pretty interesting. On students. You know, I, <laughs> getting to know students, they yeah. come in and they really think they want one thing, and then they do like, for instance, one rotation when some, do something pediatric, and they're like, no, no. I want geriatric, not pediatric. People know pretty quickly that they like. Yeah, and so students do choose which hospital they would like to do each rotation at. But you know, the fortunate thing in Mississauga is that in all rotations, there's a wide variety of patient populations and, and pathologies for each specialty. So mm -hmm. you'll you'll see everything you're supposed to see in every rotation here. Which, right, that makes sense. So. Um, some students, uh, I heard this question a lot actually in the uh, downtown St. George Academy um, Q&A that we just did. There's a concern, there's a perception that St. Mike's is basically the trauma hospital for all of Toronto, which we, we know isn't true. But I just thought I would hit that head on and ask, you know, if you're interested in urban issues and trauma, is this something that you can learn at MAM? Yes, yeah, certainly Mississauga is a large urban city, so we certainly have inner city issues. We have very similar type issues that you might see at St. Mike's in terms of um, homelessness, poverty, inner city health issues. Mm -hmm. I think anywhere you go, you'll see those patient populations yeah. in the emergency department. Uh, in terms of trauma, we get single system traumas that are brought to us unless things are really dire and they can't make it to St. Mike's or Sunnybrook. So um, trauma is Multi-system trauma is done at regionalized centers. So no matter which university you end up going to, trauma is a regionalized program. Right. So that regionalized program is not in Mississauga. We do see trauma, but it might not be the multi-system trauma that people might expect from watching TV shows. Yeah. Um, and, and those two hubs are Sunnybrook and St. Mike's. Correct. Which, of course, students could choose for their electives. electives for sure. Yeah. So um, definitely you can focus on urban issues and trauma if you are a MAM student. All right. Uh, there is a big question here, which actually tackles quite a few of the questions that we have sort of laid out. So i um, wondering what a typical week would look like and how much would a scheduled deviator change? So I think uh, that's a great question for Jenny, and um, maybe we should just talk about pre-clerkship for that. Um, so do you mind answering um, that question? Yeah, so med school is kind of different in that 
um, when you first start off, there's a lot of introduction, and as you settle in, things kind of change. But I think U of T does a great job in the fact that they try to keep our week-to-week -week schedule quite similar. Uh, so we have our foundations program, which means that we have kind of a set schedule where uh, on Monday mornings from 9 to 12, we have um, uh, our didactic lectures, and then Monday afternoons we have our CBL, case-based learning, and we discuss it in our small groups, and we answer questions. And then on Tuesday, in the beginning of the year, we tend to have a lot more ethics classes, uh, which tend to decrease in number later on in the year. Uh, but later on in the year, we have anatomy labs on Tuesdays. Um, and then Tuesday afternoons, again, some ethics lectures, so it's different types of stuff that's on Tuesdays. Wednesdays for first years, we get off, which is really nice. So if you want to do uh, any shadowing or the triple E experience that Dr. Uh, McLennan has uh, uh, mentioned, you can do that. Or you just want to catch up on work, you could do that. If you want to go home, anything is self care is off. allowed. Yes, yeah, it's like a weekend. It's great. And then on Thursday mornings, again, we have um, ethics or anatomy labs. And then on Thursday afternoons, we work through our case-based learning uh, case with a faculty. So that could be that physicians um, or specialists. And on Fridays mornings in first year, we have clinical skills from 8 to 12. And in the afternoon, sometimes we have integrated lectures, which puts the whole week or the whole block into perspective. And sometimes you get patient panels, which is nice because you get to listen to patient stories and you get to hear um, what the patient experience is like. So it's quite comprehensive, and that's basically what a week would look like. Uh, in terms of the days uh, and when you have to be in school, it usually doesn't deviate that much. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it looks like actually the person asking the question, Becca, has been admitted to the program, so congratulations, Becca, that's awesome. Um, she's wondering about carrying a part-time job while being in first year. Is it something that you feel you could have handled? I mean, everyone's different, but... Yeah, definitely. Um, I think throughout my undergrad, I have worked a part-time job. So when I came to U of T, I wanted a part-time job as well. Um, I ultimately decided not to get a part-time job because there were just so much other stuff that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And a uh, part-time job was kind of not on my priority list. But I do know people in my class who have part-time jobs, um, although they're not working like 20 hours a week. Um, I think it ha we have to be realistic that we are now medical students, so the schedule does get quite busy, um, especially right before I test and things like that. But if you're really passionate about something or if you really want to do something, uh, it's definitely possible. And would you have any advice on that? Uh, I think it's really, it depends what kind of job it is, but I think it's really important to maybe start medical school, see what opportunities there are, see how you feel in it before um, taking on another job because some people find medical school a lot of work and some do have extra time for a job. So I think it depends on the type of student you are and you may just need to feel out of it what the life is like first and then maybe finding a part-time job as well. So mm -hmm. certainly beyond first and second year it would be really hard to have a part-time job when you're in clerkship as yeah. you will have time in the evenings or on weekends that you have to be in the hospital. So. And I, I do understand, I'm sorry. I did, no, no, that's great. Thank you. Um, I understand there's a lot of anxiety about the cost of med school. And if, I mean, some people have a part-time job because there's some research interests they have that they cannot let go, which, um, you know, that might work really nicely with your career goals. If it's a part-time job because of financial concerns, I really recommend you booking an appointment with Bill and Jen. They're going to start accepting appointments after June 4th, which mm -hmm. is convocation. They're very busy with that right now. Um, and uh, they can talk to you about finances because uh, there's some ways around it and you have the summer off to work if, if you need to make that money um, because it you know you really can fill your time with medical school related things uh, and I think that's great advice to maybe start uh, school and see if you can fit it in if it's something that you still want or need at that point and again if it's related to finances always talk to Bill and Jen and see if there's something available to help you um, and we have a very specific question about dress code for clinical skills. Is there one? Um, I've never been asked that. I guess uh, just dress as professionally. Um, don't come in sweatpants. Try not to come in jeans. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's just to dress professionally. 
But I mean, I've never had anyone comment on the way that Did I you wear scrubs. No, we don't wear scrubs for clinical seals. Um, mostly, you know, I, I think we, me and most of my classmates wear like a shirt, a nice blouse, um, and some corporate pants. casual. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, I think looking professional is important. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, but I've had med students wear hats, which I don't think is appropriate, or halter tops, which is not appropriate. Oh. So we always just say dress professionally. Right. Yeah, but don't worry about making mistakes yeah. too. I mean, I'm sure you just told them it wasn't appropriate, and then you move on. There's, it's okay to make a mistake when you get here. And, um, and during a, a week, or even when you do start school here, there's going to be a lot of upper years. So um, if you ever come to ma'am and if you do see any of the upper year, just wave them down and they can show you what they wear. And I think yeah. that'll be easier. Actually, that's a great segue to a question I had, which is, are there any mentorship programs or opportunities at ma'am? So many. So, um, many. <laughs> so uh, a, a program that we had this year was a connections program, uh, which connected first year medical students with both second year medical students and um, faculty and uh, physicians. Oh wow, everybody. That's great. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think that was uh, Dr. McClendon's project. Um, yes, yeah, so we have the Connections Project, and I think mentorship is something generally works really well if you seek out someone. So we can connect you, and then you can see if you're a match. However, you know, you might want to seek out someone and develop that over time. And certainly the physicians and faculty here are really open to having students talk to them. So it'll be something you'll be able to explore for sure at MAM. So um, for instance, if, if this incoming student is interested in being connected with an upper year, are they going to get an email about it at some point? So yeah, just watch your emails. We'll start to be connecting with you throughout the summer, really, about different opportunities that are coming up. You, you won't miss out if you watch the emails. There's probably a MAM yeah, Facebook group as well. Yeah, uh, so we have already started a MAM Facebook group. Um, I think if you search on Facebook 2T3 um, Mississauga Academy of Medicine, you'll be able to find a group. And we have already had a lot of students uh, that have asked to join the group. And um, all of the 2T2 uh, MAM class is in that group and ready to talk to you guys. Okay, awesome. If you have any questions, we have had students ask questions about residents and things like that on that page mm -hmm. and they have been answered almost like ASAP. Right. So I think after a while, it's you're going to want to get rid of us the other years. <laughs> um, I don't think uh, not being able to find a mentor, especially a 2T2 to speak to, it's going to be a problem. Excellent, Jenny. That's awesome to hear. And uh, regarding your question about your um, offer letter, just if you have any questions about your offer letter and the conditions, it's best just to email md.applicants at utoronto.ca. That's where you've got your offer from and clarify with them. Um, yeah, so just shoot them an email and they'll, they'll clarify for you. And it's no problem to do that. We have a quick turnover for those, those questions. Um, I love how specific they are. I think the questions are in. You should They're purchase like... a stethoscope, hammer, or tuning fork. I don't think you need to do that prior to the first day. There should be an opportunity to do that early on in medical school. Um, so uh, it depends on where, like if you want specific ones, definitely uh, you can buy them yourselves. No one, uh, there's no rules against that. But I think in your O week, um, package so when you sign up for a week um, and orientation things like that there's going to be a form sent out to you asking you if you want to buy uh, clinical skills materials through the O-Week group um, and that's where I got mine so I got my stethoscope, tuning fork, um, hammer and everything that you've listed and everything that I could possibly need um, through that and I got it on my first day of orientation it was packaged nicely in a bag and it was handed to me. So um, I, I got that all figured out, but I definitely did have friends that, you know, had other sources where they wanted to buy from and they bought their own. So anything works. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, something we haven't touched on are the supports that are in place for MAM students. So what kind of health and wellness supports are available for MAM students? So we have um, the, uh, the Office of Health Professional and Student Affairs here at MAM, and they have an academic personal counselors and financial counselors, what, the odd time, come out 
come out here, but we have personal counselors and academic counselors here weekly, and students have access to that online, can sign up for appointments when they need them. Uh, the access is actually very great here at mm -hmm. MAM. And it's, it's uh, completely separate from the registrarial office, so it's a private appointment that you access yourself, mm -hmm. and it's very personal, um, amazing services to access. So we at the MD program take health and wellness very seriously, and, and of course, I'm sure you're available to help students yeah. and direct them if they're trying to figure out what service is best for them. And so are all of our staff, so you know. And the students that come to MAM can also access the UTM services as mm -hmm. well. So they oh, right, have access to both. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we've tackled, a, oh, I didn't ask about the anatomy lab. But the, so we were talking about, before we started filming, about um, you know how, for students planning, trying to figure out how often they are uh, required to be at the medical sciences building in the downtown campus and how often they are here in a week in the first two years we're talking about so um, anatomy was a, was something that came up so my understanding is you have a brand new anatomy lab here yes we do and yeah. Jenny can probably give you more insight into the lab it's awesome it's um, it's clean it's new it's um, everything that you could possibly want and it's uh, it's great um, it's a lot newer than the downtown one. Um, the down <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make that face. I just find going into the basement of MSB yeah. slightly creepy. <laughs> um, there's a lot of windows, so it's a completely different feel. So the new uh, new anatomy lab is. I have never seen the old one, but I'm very happy with the new one. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure if you addressed um, how often you have to go downtown. Yes. Um, so the first. Uh, so we have four bell ringers, uh, anatomy bell ringers in the first year. Um, and anything, every, all the anatomy material from the very beginning of the year to the first bell ringer is learned at downtown. But uh, the good thing is we get a coach from Mississauga oh, really? that will drive mm -hmm. us directly to St. George. Wow. So you don't have to worry about <laughs> your own transportation. Um, so it's really not that big of a deal. It's not like, oh, you have to go downtown, find your own way. Um, uh, the staff here is really considerate. So you just have to show up to your uh, Mississauga Academy of Medicine. And then there's a coach uh, with Wi-Fi that drives you uh, down to St. George uh, to do your anatomy. But um, other than that, um, our anatomy bell ringers are. Uh, so the assessments are in downtown, but as I've said, there's only four of them per year. And again, you get a coach that drives you down to St. George. So if you don't have a car where no method of transportation is still not a problem. Nice. So um, we've, we've talked a lot about sort of what it's like to be a student here. I wanted to ask you, Jenny, a couple of questions about mm -hmm. student life. I know you live down, you chose to live near, well, downtown, I guess. Yes. And you commute to school. Mm -hmm. What's that like? Um, so like I've mentioned before, it didn't, I put no preference. So I knew I wanted to live downtown because I wanted the downtown Toronto experience. Um, and uh, I take the shuttle from St. George or downtown. It's uh, right outside of Hart House for any of you that may know where that is. Uh, and it drops us off here at the instructional center. Mm -hmm. um, the shuttle's not bad. Um, it really depends on the traffic, honestly. But what I like to do is I like to leave before the traffic, get here maybe even just half an hour early. And if you take the early shuttles, like at 7.30, um, there's really no traffic. I think I spent maybe half an hour on the shuttle. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really not that bad of a commute. Yeah. yeah. And then um, do you know anyone who lives here on campus in residence? What have, how have they said they enjoy yeah. living on, on campus? And what's residence life like? Uh, so I asked a lot of my friends, and quite a few of us do live on residence. And uh, the thing that I've heard about residence is that it's, it's quite nice. Um, it is an older building, so it's not like the downtown condos where they're just brand new uh, built and you have like marble countertops. It is keep in mind a residence, mm -hmm. but it's quite different from a uh, cheaper. <laughs> it is marble countertops. Yeah, it is quite different from uh, residence and undergrad, though. So my undergrad residence experience was that I shared a very small bedroom with another girl, and then there was communal bathrooms, no kitchens. Uh, but here, residence at UTM is, um, I think it's kind of like house style. So it, they're townhouses. Uh, you have your own rooms with your own doors. And I think you share a kitchen. 
um, and you share a bathroom between two people or some people get their own bathrooms. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, um, it's like you have your own apartment. So it's very, very different than um, what residence is like in undergrad. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the medical students are placed with the grad students. Yeah, and the professional so, programs. Yeah, right. so yeah. that's also another thing that, you know, my colleagues have asked me to uh, echo on is that uh, it's very, very, it's quiet and it's, uh, for those of you, in med school that want to study, it's definitely not a problem to do that. And so, someone here asks, um, I heard that there are opportunities to take lectures at the St. George campus if that's more convenient, but things should be done at MAM. And I would echo that mandatory lectures, which not all are, but mandatory lectures need to be done at MAM. Uh, the, there's not enough um, seats downtown at the St. George campus for all the MAM students. So mandatory lectures have to be taken at your academy or at uh, at your campus. And there are very odd times where the lectures can be done at St. George, but it is we we mandatory ones need to be done in Mississauga, as well as all mandatory activities. Mm -hmm. So if you live downtown, the mandatory activities still need to be done in Mississauga. And just something to say with that is that um, usually our mandatory lectures are on Thursday mornings. Um, you have you will have CDL case based learning with a faculty in the afternoon anyways. So the chances are you're going to be having to come to Mississauga anyways. And if even if you live downtown, like I said, it's way easier taking the early shuttle than taking a shuttle at lunch. Uh, so that just puts things into perspective. Mm -hmm. And what percentage of students live in Mississauga? I think they're. Um, so for my year, I would say 50% um, of students live in Mississauga, but that's not to say that 50% of students live downtown. So there's also a lot of students that choose to live at home and they commute to Mississauga. And I think in the recent survey that we just did, a lot of them live in North York or like Branton, Oakville. So uh, I think half the class do live um, around in Mississauga. Right. Um, just mindful of the time, I think we're going to be wrapping up shortly, but something we haven't touched on is the social life of MAMERS. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when do you get together? Do you get together in your campus? Is it, do things happen down in, when you're the students who are living downtown, downtown? And do you get to know all the students at the other academies? What's it, what's it like socially? Um, so during a week, you'll get to meet everybody that goes to U of T. You'll get to meet everybody in different academies. And I would say that is uh, the best time to make friends in other academies. And that's not just a man St. George thing. That's just with every academy. Uh, because after a week, the academies tend to do things by themselves separately. So you would have academy socials. Um, and that's something that man does as well. This year, we... Um, fed our whole class for a whole day. We, we got breakfast and then we got lunch and then there was leftovers from lunch. So some students also <laughs> had dinners, um, as well as the staff here is really nice. Um, I think Mark, our uh, student experience coordinator, um, uh, he coordinated something I think about three days ago and everybody got ice cream. <laughs> um, but no one invited me to. <laughs> But also a lot of things is um, holiday parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We had a holiday party at a pub near uh, near the campus. Uh, there's a lot of things that are hosted by the school, but also a lot of my friends and we get together around Mississauga. Um, there's Sky Zone is not far from here. It's about 10 minutes away. Uh, there are also, I know a lot of people are concerned about like the nightlife at Mississauga. Um, I'm going, going to admit the nightlife is not as robust as it is downtown. I don't think anywhere is, uh, but there are some. Um, I think one of the most popular ones amongst my year is called Ann Co. And I think it's about 10, 20 minutes uh, from the campus. So um, no matter what you want to do, there still is stuff to do, definitely. Mm -hmm. So you feel like, you know, if you're a social person, you're absolutely going to be kept yeah. busy. Yeah, definitely. And um, a lot of, like me and a lot of my uh, man colleagues do go downtown often. Like if you have a weekend off and a lot of people do go downtown when there is um, different socials there as well. So just because you you are out here in Mississauga doesn't mean you have to miss out everything uh, that is going downtown. 
And in case we have kept any viewers for this whole amount of time, oh, we do. Thank you for watching. Uh, I thought I'm going to put you guys on the spot for the last question. Just, I'd like to know what is your favorite thing about Mayo? Oh, my favorite thing is definitely the people I've met. I've, I've only met these people for like eight months of my life, and I feel like I'm the best friends with them, and the support system is just great. Thank you, Jenny. I would have to agree. I think, um, I mean, I chose to practice in Mississauga, and I really love the, the hospital system, and I love um, our space here in Mississauga for, for teaching, and uh, it's just been a great experience living and working in Mississauga. Well, thank you so much for joining me today for our Man Advantage chat, and thank you everyone who's watching. Um, feel free to email any questions to medicine.admiss, A-D-M-I-S-S, -S, at utrana.ca, and if we haven't addressed them here, we can reply to your email. Um, congratulations to all our new members who watched today, yeah, we'll see and you. look forward to meeting you in uh, August, yeah. soon, right around the corner. Bye-bye.